right. Welcome back to another episode of the Ricky Henderson podcast, the greatest of all podcasts, the GUAP. We are here with episode 82, 82 with Neil DeMoss of Field of Schemes. He's been covering um, public subsidies and how they impact uh, pro sports teams for about 25 years now, basically about as long as the A's have have been searching for a new stadium. So we thought this guy would be the Neil would be the best guy to have to talk about rendering. So uh, Neil, how are you doing? Boy, are my arms tired? Yeah. Um, I'm, doing, <laughs> I'm doing okay. It's been been quite a last few weeks, but as you say, it's been also been a lot, quite a last 20, 25 years. So yeah, just you know, another another twist in this endless saga. Well, thanks so much. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, your host Alex Espinosa with my co-host Hal Gordon. And um, so, yeah, I, I was going to ask you, to, just to, first of all, I mean, big picture, is there any saga that kind of compares to this? I mean, I, I believe the first time they were looking for a stadium and had some sort of some juice behind it was 2001 in Uptown Oakland and Jerry, uh, Mayor, then Mayor Ray, Jerry Brown shot it down. Um, and here we are, you know, 23 years later, still looking for a stadium. Is, does anything really compare to this in North America that you've seen? Man, in terms of length, possibly not. In terms of the amount of time that they've been that the A's have been talking about building something somewhere, um, I can't think of anything else that compares. You know, there's other things that have gone on an awfully long time. Obviously, you know, the raise situation has been going on for a long time, and uh, you know, in terms of like teams like sort of beating their heads against situations year after year after year. The Twins and the Marlins both did it about 10 years straight. The Twins are probably actually longer than that. Um, but uh, I don't think there's anything that sort of had this like flare up and, you know, t- we're talking about San Jose and then it goes away. Oh, we're talking about Fremont. And then it goes, oh, we're talking <laughs> about Oakland, you know. Um, it, it really is incredibly remarkable. And, you know, I would say it's amazing to see it ending now, but I don't, necessarily feel like this is the end you know it feels like this is another stage that wherever things wind up it's you know there's there's still a lot of chapters left to go before we get to the end of this book yeah neil so um you know we all we all saw the renderings um i think that uh there's some some parts of them were pretty pretty intense and i mean they're definitely vegas uh i don't really i didn't understand the armadillo uh reference uh, there's no armadillos in nevada but uh <laughs> but um certainly certainly that screen is is something it's something it seems like uh it, it seems like it'd be tough to see from the first base side it would be an intense situation if it was right behind you and over you but you know that's that's vegas baby but um do, you know where where does that leave where does that leave them? Once once you have a render, that means you you're able to uh, build the stadium, right? Easy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why I've started calling these renderings vaporecture, which is that you know the initial design sometimes bears a vague resemblance to what's ultimately built, but oftentimes it does not. Right? You know, it's just something to sort of get attention and get people excited. Um, and yeah, I mean, the renderings are definitely a lot. Um, you know, I guess the armadillo thing is because the the different segments <laughs> of the roof kind of look like bands on an armadillo. The, the uh, you know, the, let's not forget that the original verbal description, right, was that they were going to somehow reflect baseball pennants. Yeah, and that made it. even yeah. less sense. So armadillo <laughs> yeah. at least is sort of creeping in the right direction. You know, um, stegosaurus something in there. <laughs> um, but um, you know, again, you know it. They, they needed to come up with something. There were two things you wanted them to come up with here, right? You wanted them to come up with something exciting and something that seemed realistic and sort of explained how it was going to work. And they did one of those things <laughs> yeah. and not the other at all, right? Yeah, yeah. So we've got this thing that if it can be built will certainly be striking and that scoreboard that is somehow curved and attached to a fabric roof <laughs> and you can't see it from the whole, you know, first base side. But, you know, I mean, it's it's definitely, you know, the sort of thing that I would love to see built just to see how well or poorly it turns out. But, you know, I mean, first it's of like all, the that's sphere. An awful lot. I, I feel like they're going to kind of be like the sphere. You know, they saw the sphere. So then I think uh, John uh, John Fisher was quoted in the Susan Slessor's uh, article in the San Francisco yeah. Chronicle. Be like, 
oh, I was blown away, blown away by this YouTube performance. So maybe he was like, oh, we can do that here in the baseball stadium. <laughs> but it's like, I mean, I'll, ah. I'll give him that, that the yeah. sphere sounded yeah. like a dumb idea and it is what it claimed to be, right? They managed yeah. to build a sphere, but a sphere isn't that complicated, right? Yeah. I mean, but if it's only in right field, the... they have right field and left field and center field going, you know, they only, <laughs> yeah, in the sphere, yeah, inside yeah. the sphere is pretty, is pretty simple. And I just, there's a, so much about these renderings that are just, you know, so bizarre, you know, the sun setting in places that the sun is not meant to set. The fact that it's, you know, takes it standing somehow in this vast void when it really is going to be crammed into a corner of the site along with the, uh, right the <laughs> development i mean it just it seems like they just went to you know bjark engels and said give us something cool looking and this is what they got but i mean i don't i still don't understand how they're going to fit this on nine acres even you know if you say well uh, you know somehow it, it will fit along with wasn't there a point which they were saying that they were going to use part of the other the rest of the site for the roof to retract but of course the roof isn't retracting now yeah okay. so it, it really does seem like the story changes every five minutes yeah uh neil i knew that you and i were going to be uh fast friends because i think uh i noticed <laughs> that you noticed the same thing that i did which is in the seemingly uh ai generated uh, crowd uh there were a bunch of fans <laughs> waving flags that are just that were just solid green and i you know i didn't post anything about it i just i just noted and i was like that's funny uh neil would you like to explain what uh that solid green flag is well you know i mean i so i, I i've looked at a lot of renderings okay <laughs> and the first thing i always do is what are the fans doing because you know there's only so much clip art that they have. And oftentimes they're holding flags. I don't know why, I guess, because it looks cool. No matter the sport, they're usually holding giant flags. Even if there's a middle of a play going on and the flags <laughs> will obscure people from seeing, they're still holding flags. So I'm like, oh, okay, let's see what the flags say. And they're just green. So I, you know, I Google green, solid green flag. And it was the flag of Muammar Gaddafi's Libya. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, yeah. imposed during the, the time when he was in charge there. So I, you know, I <laughs> guess it's possible that, you know, when they're saying that, uh, that uh, the Vegas stadium will bring tourists that, He's talking about hey. time travel. Worldwide. Worldwide. Not, hey, just, the, not the whole the, country, but the Gad whole world. Yeah. Gaddafi <laughs> family's got a lot of money to spend. You know, they probably stole a lot of money before they were thrown out. But, um, you know, one of the things that the, the A's claimed that, the, the reason why they couldn't show us these pictures for a long time was the uh, Bally's wasn't ready, right? And they didn't want to show us something that was going to end up that we're going to have to throw out anyway. And, you know, I they've they've at least said, hey, here's what we want to build. But of course, the big thing that, you know, we were told we can't see these renderings, we can't see these renderings because, you know, we need to know how the Tropicana looks and where where's the Tropicana? Yeah. I mean, it, from these renderings, the stadium looks like it's plumb in the middle, right, right smack in the middle again of that yeah. of that uh, plot of land. Maybe that's what the embargo was for, <laughs> yeah. right? They 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 released it and then claimed a few minutes later, oh, we meant to embargo this. Maybe yeah. the embargo was yeah. to let Bally's get have a chance to get ready with their renderings because those surely are coming soon. Yeah. You know, the Gaddafi regime was always good at getting around embargoes. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, one thing I noticed about this set of renderings, like the, the last ones from last May, there was more aerial views. You know, you kind of have a, a better feel for how much space of the 35 acre lot it would take up. From this, they're like street view and they're inside the stadium where the whole stadium's in focus. So you can't really see how it spaces the whole lot. But there's no way this thing fits in nine acres, right? I, I, I just, that was my initial thought was there's no way this thing fits in nine acres, right? Like, I don't think so. Nine acres is really small. I think even Wrigley Field is bigger than nine acres or right around that. Um, yeah. And, you know, you're talking, it's unclear what's going to be holding this roof up, right? It seems like there's some sort of truss work that holds the fabric, but, you know, you need something that's going to actually hold the roof, right? To support the weight, that's how engineering <laughs> works. Um, and it can't just be held up by the ground or the seats below it or something like that. So, I mean, you know, you look at something like the Marlins Stadium, right, which has re that retractable roof and you see you watch it even watching the games. There's these enormous posts, mm -hmm. right, that are holding that up. 
Um, again, it's a little lighter if you're using fabric, but it, it, you know, it doesn't seem to make an awful lot of sense. And no, I don't think it can fit on nine acres, but I could be wrong. You know, there could be some way to do it. But like you said, if they're trying to show that this is going to fit with the Bally's development, then it would have been nice to see an image of it with the Bally's development so we'd actually see how it's going to work, right? I mean, this, this again, it's it's not at all unusual to release these kind of things. It is a little bit unusual to release these kind of things when you've been asked these questions for three months and then you release something that doesn't answer any of the questions. Yeah. And, and another so, I mean, listen, if they, if they build this, it looks great. You know, if they build this, I think... I think, you know, it fits in with Vegas. It looks like the Sydney Opera House, but then again, it's across the street from, you know, this, the uh, the Statue <laughs> of Liberty anyway, right? Like, I, it sort of fits. It's not my style, but it sort of fits the Vegas style. But, you know, like, let's talk a little bit about, is it going to be built? Um, you know, they're getting 300 and is it $380 million, maybe more in public funds, but like, you know, compared to what other teams are asking for, that's almost Trump change now. Yeah. Uh, and it's, there's like huge gaps in funding. How do you think they are? Where do you think they are in funding? I mean, Fisher, I think this was in Slusser's article, right? Where he was saying that it was 380, it's 380 up front in, in public money. There's like about another 200 or something that comes later in terms of tax breaks. So, you know, he can use that to pay himself back. Um but then there's 500 million that he's putting up supposedly from his family money, which I don't know if he actually has access to that or not, you know. Um, and then there is um, 200 million, I think. Another 500 in, million from from private investors. They're looking. They're seeking. Well, yeah, yeah, I was gonna look at that. It's 200 million in debt, right? So which the, yeah. I guess he needs to borrow that and pay that back. And then 500 million from private investors, which. Private investors in what, right? I mean, is he going to sell part of the team and get money from that? I, that seems, why would anybody want to invest $500 million in a team and then turn around and you owe $500 million extra in on the stadium? I mean, maybe, depending on how the, how the you know, revenues break down. Um, or is he talking about selling, getting $500 million investment in the stadium itself, which also doesn't make a lot of sense? It, it, you know, the more he explains, it feels like the more questions there are. And again, it's possible that there's some financing plan out there um, where he's going to work this out. But, you know, it's March now. It's been nine months since he got the public money approved. And his plan for the rest of it is still we're working on that. And <laughs> you, know, you would think that if he had a more concrete plan, he would have said it by now. The other is, issue, of course, is that is can this even be built for? you know, one and a half billion or whatever it is, right? I mean, this this roof design seems, again, gorgeous in a bonkers kind of way, but I don't have any idea how you would even know what it's going to cost, right? Because nobody's ever built anything like this before. And Neil, you've also reported, like, so the, the ace figure they go with is 380 million, uh, 380 million of public tax money. I think that was just so they could say, oh, we're, we're getting more money from Vegas than Oakland. I think the number was 375 there. But in the article with Susan Slusser, it was 350. So I don't know. But then you've reported it's actually closer to 600 million. So I, I would love to, uh, if you could explain uh, the 600 million figure that you arrived at and, and what you think the actual cost for Nevada taxpayers is going to end up being if, if this thing is built. Yeah, I, my understanding again is it's 380 million up front, right? Uh -huh. In just straight cash. But then later they get the benefit of not paying property taxes and some other, you know, taxes that they're going to get kicked back. So that's just as valuable to Fisher and just as much of a cost to Nevada taxpayers as if it were money up front. So the subsidy is 600 million. Okay. That doesn't necessarily mean that he has six hundred million dollars in cash that he can just like you know put in a suitcase and hand over to whoever's going to build this thing. Um, but it does mean that you know if he wants to take the three eighty he's getting and find two twenty somewhere else, that later on he will get the benefit of not paying taxes and he can you know recoup some of that two twenty. 
Um, but, uh, but it's, you know, that, that's, that's the difference is like, you know, there's always, there's a, a great researcher named Judith Grant Long, who, uh, did a book on, uh, trying to figure out what the full cost uh, is of, uh, you know, counting all the hidden costs of, of sports stadiums. And her estimate, I think was that the average stadium costs about 40% more than whatever the claim is for the public cost. Um, and that's, I'm trying to do math in my head. 40% yeah, of 380 yeah. is, uh, about, uh, 160 or so. Yeah. It was, it's pretty close in terms of that. Yeah. One, 160. Yeah. About. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it really is, I think kind of, kind of shocking, um, how much, how much that he, you know, that, that they just sort of, they rolled over and gave him, you know, I, I, you know, we followed this really closely, um, in Oakland and just watching how quick they approved all this money in Nevada uh, was blew me away. I, you know, I think one thing that I noticed, you know, being in California, all of our, all of our state legislature, you know, everyone in the state legislature, that's their full-time job. They do it all the time and they have a lot of staff and uh, they're didn't, you know, <laughs> these part-time legislatures in Nevada, they're the, the the speaker of the house he's he's in a he's like a, an attorney uh for i think he's either an attorney or or he he runs car dealerships or something i don't even know but it just it's nuts like and they didn't seem to have any staff because the people presenting it to them the experts presenting it to them were li were literally the a's lobbyist i yeah. was just like you don't have you don't have anybody you know you don't have like a congressional research somebody or other right. to it and it just was i just was i was just shocking seeing this amount of money just go out the door um yeah crazy but that's not unusual right even in places yeah. that have full-time legislatures right i mean it was shoved through at the last minute with very little discussion. And when the Buffalo Bills got their money from New York State, New York State has a regular, you know, full time legislature and all that. Um, but it was the same thing where it was like, OK, here, you're going to approve this. Right. And everybody sort of said, uh, I don't know what the, what does leadership say? And then they just voted for it. Um, and there was no, you know, nobody did any economic studies. Nobody did hearings. Nobody did any of that. Um, so it really does come down to like, you know, how much pull both the political leadership and the business leadership has, you know, if they can sort of, you know, rally the troops and say, okay, we're going to get everybody on board here. And everybody's going to say, okay, fine. One more. And it was a fight, right? I mean, this thing did go into an extra session. It did, you know, I remember watching all that stuff, you know, there was constant back and forth about, you know, what are you going to give us? Um, but I think everybody knew in the end, right. It was like, about naming your price, right? It wasn't about is yeah. this going to get approved. It was okay. What do we have to give you? I it just was nuts. It's like okay, so we're not we're never going to make you pay taxes, but but you're going to do good things for the community. You're going to give us a community skybox. I'm just, I'm like, dude, just just ask them to pay their taxes, and then you can yep. use whatever you want with that money. <laughs> you can do whatever you want with the money. You don't have to take it in, in an in kind, you know, whatever. Anyway, oof, it's well, just it is nuts. Um. Yeah, well, no, I was just go ahead. Say, I'm gonna get. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting mad. No, no, no. Go. I just got something to say. Go for it, Al. Go for it. Yeah. What do you got? What do you got? You know, I, I think, I, I, I wonder seeing, seeing. You know, we'll we'll see what happens with the Bears and the White Sox, but I, I wonder if these these much more, uh, you know, these solidly liberal. I mean, I guess I was shocked about the New York giveaway to the bills. I thought for certain they would be a little bit smarter, but uh, you know what? New York politicians have, sh have confused me a lot recently, but uh, you know, it could be, I, I wonder if uh, a lot of politics, sort of these, these blue or these more liberal politicians have started to kind of figure out that this is just giveaways to billionaires. You know, I'm not sure that Illinois is ready to roll over for Jerry Reinsdorf and certainly what was being offered uh what was being offered in Oakland always seemed to me to be like hey this offsite infrastructure stuff we're going to do this anyway you know hey this these these um this tax district on this big parking lot the only way this park this big parking lot's getting redeveloped is if is if this thing sort of happens anyway you know it wasn't it also wasn't the sales tax you know the sales tax was still going to be going to the going back to to Oakland and California, they weren't giving that up. Uh, I wonder 
you know, if do you see sort of uh, liberal politicians standing up more to these play these teams? And if so, you know, are we just going to see these teams leaving these areas, like the the A's leaving Oakland, potentially the White Sox leaving Chicago? I, or or do you think do you think these other places are still going to roll over? Yeah, I've been waiting for like this groundswell of uh, of either the populace or elected officials, right, to sort of start pushing back on this stuff. And it has happened occasionally, you know. Um, I got I got uh, called in to testify before Congress once uh, because uh, Henry Waxman and uh, Dennis Kucinich, you know, were holding hearings on the on this on uh, tax use of tax exempt bonds, um, you know. So and and you will get this sort of weird, not really a coalition, but like occasional progressives, right, who are like upset. Why are we giving all this money to rich people when we could be spending it on other things? And then occasional like libertarian conservatives, right, who are like. We just don't like spending tax money on anything. So certainly we don't like spending it on this, right? So, but the problem is that it seems to be less who's in power that determines these things than just the fact that anybody in power sort of sees it as their business supporting local businesses, right? And there's just the fact that you have local businesses and especially, you know, ones that are prominent like a sports team have such sway and you know i imagine that when you're mayor you know everybody around you if you're you know going to parties with lobbyists and other elected officials and business leaders and all that right are are saying to you you got to figure out a way of, of doing something for these people right you got to get something done um so right so jb pritzker right the governor of illinois who's a democrat mm -hmm. is saying well you know really don't see Put, giving a lot of tax money to this, although he always says, unless we get something back for it, which is a big caveat. Right. But, right. you know, if you look at uh, Brandon Johnson, right, is the uh, mayor, the mayor of Chicago who was just elected, who's a big, yeah. you know, progressive who was, you know, I remember when you, when uh, I was out in Chicago when, during the election, um, the run up to the election, and everybody was really excited about, you know, progressives were really excited about, you know, this is somebody who's not going to be the kind of, you know, sort of corrupt uh, centrist mayor that Chicago has had a lot that's just going to, you know, roll over for businesses. And one of the first things he does is say, you know, oh, this would be really great if we can, you know, get a bunch of public money for the Bears and the and the White Sox. I think part of it is it's mostly state money. So he's like, well, that's great for me because I'm not the one paying for it. Um, but, you know, you would think there's a principle of I don't want my constituents to be paying for this through their state taxes or their city taxes. Um, but again, that's just not how local electeds think. And it's amazing the degree to which, you know, people who are, you know, talk the talk before they're elected, um, you know, just roll right over once they're in office. And I'm like, well, you know. Well, even with this the is, A's, is... like like the initial round of questioning when they were in front of the Nevada legislatures, uh, Fabian Donate really sticks out to me. He was really asking tough questions and putting up this front, but then he he approved it anyways. You know, like three days later, there was a long weekend. You know, enough time to maybe grease up some palms or whatever. But I mean, were you surprised at how quickly they they approved this, especially after getting? It seems like they got burned by the Raiders, right? By seven hundred fifty million dollars in taxpayer money. Um, yeah, of course they got an assist I mean, from Sheldon Adelson and well, not the A's to don't Jeremy really have Aguero. A... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, mean I, I mean, were you surprised? I mean, after the Raiders, they were still they they still approved this, and you know, no, I mean, the, I mean, the Seattle Seattle got burned by the Seahawks right after they got burned by the Mariners, and you know, there's lots of lots of places to do a whole series of them in a row. Um, <laughs> you know, New York uh, did, built a, a arena for the Nets right after they uh, built stadiums for the Yankees and the Mets, and. So I wasn't totally, totally surprised at that. I was a little surprised after it didn't get passed in the regular session. I thought, wow, you know, if they if they had figured all this out and had their ducks in a row and, you know, had lined up the votes, then they would have gotten this done in the regular session. You know, mm -hmm. so if this is going to special session, there must really be a chance that there's going to be opposition. But I think they just didn't have their time, you know, to, to, to get it together. I think it was just like, OK, well, we'll figure out. And there was, I, I forget what it was. It was something that the governor had vetoed of Nevada that, uh, that, you know, enraged the, uh, the Democrats in particular. And so there was sort of like a, you know, oh, okay, well, we're not going to give you your stadium now. Um, but, uh, so a, a little bit surprised the way it went down, but again, not really. Cause I, I 
it's been through so many of these things. There's so many times that I've been like, oh man, this one, you know, clearly is going to be the one that's going to, you know, crash and burn. And then <laughs> somehow, you know, somebody starts counting votes in the legislature and starts saying, okay, we need to peel off seven bodies. What can we give them? And, you know, as soon as it's just about counting votes, then you can always find some way of, of buying people off. I remember the Marlins deal. There was some, uh, there was a county commissioner who was basically like, I, I need something for my district if I'm going to vote for this. And the uh, next day she got right. for district. Just yeah. get it. Yeah. Well, Neil, I want to ask you sort of, I want to maybe almost pitch you on something. So I think uh, if if you've been paying attention to sort of what's going on still left in Oakland is, is yeah. the fans have really been trying to, to organize, figure out ways to, to at least, you know, celebrate themselves, show, show that this is not right. I think at the beginning, uh, a lot of people in, in baseball were saying like, ah, no one's going to the stadium anyway, but now people, I think the media has, you know, kind of coalesced around John Fisher's a, a, dum a dummy. And if this doesn't <laughs> happen, it won't be surprising. And all these fans here, you know, have been fighting back and, and we, you know, they're there, but for the, you know, grace of God, go my, go my, you know, my fandom. Um, this is, I think a, a long shot, but uh, we've been talking a lot with the, 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 the teachers union in Nevada. Uh, they're trying both sort of a lawsuit and uh, a referendum method. Uh, the referendum has a long way to go. They need they need a ruling from the Nevada Supreme Court that uh, like at least affirms that like this wording is okay, so they could start collecting signatures. And they need a whole lot of money. Uh, what the plan sort of I think that that I've talked with the the Nevada Teachers Union is and uh, that I've spoken with a lot of fans is is you know we're having another night. Uh, and on opening night, another night of sort of protest where we're all going to just hang out in the parking lot and have a big boycott. Uh, and at that night, the schools over stadiums that Nevada Teachers Union is going to be in the parking lot asking A's fans to donate whatever they would have spent in the stadium that night uh, for this referendum. Uh, you know, again, this is a long shot. It basically, sort of everything needs to go right. Uh, but if they do, you know, in, in some sense, you know, this wouldn't this wouldn't be the ultimate transformational moment but but in some sense i think that this would be a great story of a t you know the t the threat is always we're going to leave and what this would be is is fans of the team that is leaving coming together and sort of pooling pooling their money against the billionaire and trying to fight back so you know referendums you know only it's not a, it's definitely not a sure thing with referendums for stadium funding whereas like i think the legislature can always be sort of bought off uh you know when you have the referendum that's not necessarily the thing uh, you know how what would that do you think that that would be sort of a big moment for stadium funding if ace fans got together funded this referendum and put it on the ballot in a different state yeah i can't think of, a, of an example that exactly went down like that um and i think certainly everything the ace fans are doing is making a case to major league baseball if not necessarily to john fisher right that oakland is still a good baseball market and that the problem is john fisher and is not oakland right so i mean th look there's still a whole bunch of things that can go wrong with the vegas move right the referendum could could knock it down the lawsuit could knock it down uh fisher could not be able to find his 500 million dollars in uh, investors the price of the stadium could go up the they might not be able to figure out a way to fit it on the site there's you know a million different things that you know the economy could change and suddenly you know it doesn't look like as good a deal as it as it i mean not that it looks like a great deal now um but it could look even worse so there's all kinds of ways that this could, could collapse right so you certainly want if you're an A's fan you know you want to be positioning yourself and the city as okay if Fisher's not going to you know, to taking the team to Las Vegas, we want either for him to come back here or for him to sell it to somebody local, right? And Major League Baseball has certainly done that before. Look what they did with the Giants, right? You know, the Giants were ready to uh, to uh, move to Tampa Bay, and they did not because Major League Baseball decided, okay, we think it would be better. We got another guy who wants to buy it by the team, and we think that uh, it would be better to keep the team there. Um, 
So, so that's a possibility. Ironically enough, John Fisher was involved in that group. <laughs> and then the, and then, uh, and then the, it's only so, I, I was going to say there's only so many billionaires in the world, but uh, there's just a lot right now. There were only so many then. Um, but, and then the, the, the other thing of course, is that if they do move, you want to be in a position to be the, the Cleveland Browns, right? Where, yeah. okay, we want to be first in line for, for an expansion team. In either case, the problem then is what, what do you do to get the team, right? Whether it's to get the team right. back, what do you do for, you know, the new owner or for the, the owner of expansion team or whatever right. uh, is, uh, you know, is Howard Terminal still on the table is something at uh, the Coliseum a possibility, but you know, you don't want major league baseball to come back and say, congratulations, you've got the team back or you've got a new team. If <laughs> you build yeah. a $3 billion stadium with a diamond encrusted yeah. roof. Yeah. Um, yeah. so that's, that's the danger there. Um, yes. and again, you do it. Um, but, uh, I, I think it's, it's a worry that, you know, it's only half the battle to get a franchise. Then you have to win the terms on which you're going to get the franchise. Well, I, you know, I think, I think this fight has been, you're right. Like, you know, it's just like, you know, get to that. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, my view is, my view about this whole thing is is fan fan groups. You know, there's no like playbook. I think for fan groups to fight back when uh, when you know they just say fine, screw you. We're gonna take more money from this other team, and so you know whatever whatever A's fans can figure out to do, and whatever we can do, you know. And if that's honestly like if that's if if collectively we raise half a million dollars, a million dollars, like compared to what Nevada's offering, I mean. That's that's a great deal to mess John Fisher, I think. So I really hope, like I, you know, I really hope we can do that. And you know, there's some big there's some big donors out there in the Bay Area who I think, you know, if they see A's fans putting putting their money where their mouth is, I think will will fall fall in behind us. So um, you, you're absolutely right. I don't want to be in the situation where we sort of win them back and then are given a three billion dollar bill. That's not what I want at all. Uh, but at, at this moment, you know, I just kind of if if I know that I helped uh, to cause J John Fisher uh, uh, headaches that cost him ten million dollars, you know, then then I'll die happy. <laughs> I just hope there could. I just hope there can be another in stadium event at some point this year, if only so that uh, we can again watch the national TV announcers try to avoid mentioning what everybody is <laughs> doing. What's that was happening? My favorite part of yeah. twenty twenty three. <laughs> that was great. Uh, what our plan, I think what our plan might be now is for, for a boycott is to just to really limit how many people go in on opening night. And then maybe like in the fifth inning, everyone just lays in on their horn. And so it'll be an empty stadium. And then all of a sudden it just sounds like every car alarm goes off at the same time. That's, that's our plan right now. So all right. we got, I'll, we got I'll tune in for that game. <laughs> I'm going to ask about one more topic before we let Neil get out of here. He's been really gracious with his time. Thanks so much. Is uh, it's just in the past week, Utah legislators passed, I think, $900 million in a subsidy, right, for MLB Stadium and $900 million for an NHL Stadium, I believe. Those were the numbers. I don't know if they've changed, but are they a real Something threat like at all to attract the A's, or is is it too late in the process for them? Or do you feel like, hey, that could be a whole other uh, Pandora's box opening here? You know, I don't know anymore. I didn't think Las Vegas was really a legitimate threat, right? I mean, Las Vegas is tiny for a baseball market. Um, especially in terms of uh, TV market size. And that, that matters an awful lot, even with, you know, the collapse of cable, it still matters an awful lot um, for baseball finances. Um, so, you know, it doesn't seem, it's hard for me to picture um, the A's moving to Salt Lake City. Um, even if they build a new stadium there, it's hard for me to picture John Fisher getting excited about moving there. But I don't know anymore, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're we're this is this is the problem. And I have I have worked for for billionaire fail sons before, and I have realized that it's important to keep in mind that they're not doing things for rational reasons, right? You know, they're doing things for weird reasons having to do with ego and insecurity and like you know wanting to be loved and all this stuff. Um, so, you know, if, uh, if the mayor of Salt Lake city came to John Fisher and, uh, and said, uh, you know, we're going to give you nine and a half acres, you know, <laughs> yeah. would he be, you know, his head be turned? I have, I honestly have no idea. Again, 
Salt Lake City is not, you know, one of the cities I would consider to be at the top of the list for um, for uh, a baseball market. Um, but but, you know, who knows what Utah fans are nuts, though. Utah fans are like really intense. I don't know. I feel like it would be be good baseball fans. It's just a small market. You know, it's like it's 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 really especially compared to, you know, Oakland, you know, even, you know, having like, I don't know, one out of three or one out of four or whatever of the fans in the in the Bay Area following you um, and potentially having more if you ever actually put a good team on the field. um, That's, you know, that's still a ton more than you would have in, in Salt Lake. So um so i don't know i mean it again it doesn't make sense to me but i hesitate to say but who um, knows at this point it's yeah. not a threat because you know, <laughs> at this point you know what 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 a, a uh you know an, a, an enraged john fisher is going to do is unpredictable that you know i'll just say this and we'll let you go thank you so much neil's on the on the east coast right now and so you know we we kept him up uh, past his bedtime but uh uh, <laughs> uh the, the deal. absolutely <laughs> I, hey man 9 9 30 i'm, 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 I'm getting done. i'm getting ready i'm doing the new york times crossword puzzle but uh <laughs> um that that utah deal just seems so obscene to me the the deal is they're they you know they, they came to the legislature they said we're going to build this this big entertainment district with or without the stadium but if we do end up getting a stadium then and only then we will you'll you'll surrender all property tax and sales tax on this land to us so we can build you it's you know that usually usually there's some facade of oh well you know we we can't build this. We can't build any of this unless you give us the tax break. You know, we we can't bring these jobs to the community unless you give us the tax break. They just went. They just went up and said, "We're going to build this either way, and if we get a team, we're not paying taxes." But, but that's just, the same thing. That's the same thing that's going on right now in Alexandria, Virginia, with the arena for the Capitals and yeah, the, the Wizards, true. right? Where they were going to build a development, and then it's like, oh, but if we get a stadium, then we can kick back all the money, you know, the tax money, and use it to pay for the stadium. And same thing with the White Sox, right? It's a big property in in the South Loop in Chicago that they were been planning a big development. Oh, if we put a baseball stadium there, <laughs> it will magically be so much better that you know we can. It'll be worth kicking back all you know billions of dollars and. It, it it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense, right? I think what the team owners and their elected official friends are learning is that it's better to have a story that you stick with and that you can, you know, make into slides and, you know, with really big numbers. It, the numbers don't have to mean anything. The logic doesn't have to be there. None of it has to mean anything as long as you just keep repeating and repeating and repeating it. And so people who you know, want to say, well, this would be nice, can say, well, I don't know. On the one hand, there's every economist in the country saying this is a terrible idea. On the other hand, there's this really pretty picture. Um, I guess the truth must be somewhere in the middle. Well, well, who I'm doesn't love an arm the, the the Virginia <laughs> Democrats who, who in this in the state Senate there who told them, uh, I don't think so, but we'll we'll see if they figure out a, a way to a way to 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 bribe them correctly i don't know we'll see <laughs> all right well neil demoss thank you so much everybody make sure to check out his work at fieldofschemes.com does a great job of covering this topic not just the a's like literally the whole country is all over it. i don't know how you keep all these numbers and information in your head but uh great work over the years thanks so much for your time really appreciate it neil thank you i'm glad to do this all right thanks again to neil demoss for that great chat and check out his work at fieldofschemes.com. Now me and Hal are going to chop it up and tell you guys how we really feel about the armadillo, spir- the spherical armadillo. Hal, what would you give it out of 10? Out of 10, what would you give this rendering? If I was, if it was my team, <laughs> you know, I don't know, man. Like, <sighs> so weird. It's, you know, I grew up, I grew up going to like, you know, Wrigley Field and uh, you know, for all my all, all my life as a kid, there wasn't even a jumbotron. You know, there wasn't even screens at Wrigley Field. So this <laughs> gigantic freaking ribbon of a screen that seemingly is not visible to half the stadium. 
I mean, it's Vegas. You know, I give it I give it a, a 10 out of 10 for being Vegas <laughs> and a 4 out of 10 for being a baseball stadium, man, well, you know? I, I think it's like 8 out of 10 cool fact. Like, I think if they actually did that, it would be kind of cool, but I don't think – but I give it like a 2 out of 10 because there's no chance in hell this thing actually happens, you know? And, and the views aren't going to be the same and – I don't know, man. It's just so, it's just another fake rendering and they release it by accident because they had to, you know? So, yeah, not great. They, they not just, great. they, they like, they take every opportunity to step on their own dicks, man. Like, <laughs> re releasing it a day early. Like, so what are they doing, man? Yeah, uh, it's nuts. Um, yeah, and then today they had their press conference in a press release. Like, it was like, oh, this is the press conference they would have had, but uh, we'll just write it down on paper and, I think they just can't impress. Yeah. Conference. Yeah. Boy. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I can, I can't imagine it would be, I like, it just would be such a strange way to watch a baseball stadium to be in that right field bleachers where the roof, like the ceiling <laughs> behind you is the score is, is a jumbotron flashing lights on you the entire time. I mean, I don't know, man, I guess, I well, guess I, I, I guess if like, you live in Vegas, you're used to it. But yeah, like like we mentioned, I think it's like kind of influenced by the sphere. But also like SoFi right? Stadium's curved, but it's more like this, like it's horizontal. So it's not but this is like right, it, it's, it's like curved. it's like a it's vertical like curved over you. Yeah, yeah, it's like you're in the middle of the stadium and oh okay, cool. You can look at it from both sides. But this is like oh god. Yeah. So I I don't know. But but I think yeah, this, I this mean, dude this... Bjark Bjark Ingels is famous for his um yeah. kind of outlandish uh, renderings and then yeah. I, I I recently read that his materials aren't the greatest and his uh, his buildings degrade over time and stuff like that so or like worse than they should so yeah we'll see, yeah we'll see you know I I don't think it's I don't think it's like terrible you know I think I think I think if you're if if I was thinking how am I going to sell a baseball team in Vegas it would be Put a put a, put them in put them in a in a in a stadium that looks like a a, a you know a foreign um, landmark and <laughs> yeah. have a bunch of crazy like lights Tower, all over the place. You got the pyramid. You got the, the yeah, yeah. You got all yeah. Now you got the the Sydney Opera House. Yeah. So you know, I think the big thing if if you're still listening to us and you're still thinking about the stadium stuff, I think the big thing to look out for this week and possibly next week is what's going to happen with the Coliseum site. So this week, apparently, uh, the A's are meeting with the African American Sports Entertainment Group, which uh, you know does not have any sports teams uh, and does not have any entertainment and whatever. You know, I mean, listen, that site, the Coliseum site should be developed. It's it's a lot of land. It's right next to the BART station. I want it to be developed. I want it to be a lot of housing. I want it to be a lot of good stuff. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm just worried. I, I'm worried in two things, right? That basically what, what we're doing is we're we're facilitating John Fisher to get a, a check for $150 million for selling it to the AASAG, right? And when we were talking to Neil here, you know, we were saying, where is John Fisher going to find this money? That's $150 million he can cross off the list if he sells that land. So, you know, I really hope, you know, I kind of, I kind of hope that, that the city and Alameda County doesn't make it that easy to sell that land, at least right now, you know, or try and try and get the land back. I mean, it's it's a bummer that that the county was so stupid to have done that. Yeah, I mean, but, um, I, I was going back and reading uh, comments from Libby Schaff from I think that deal was done in 2018 or 19, I believe, something like that. But she was saying like, OK, like because the A's are saying, oh, we're going to invest in East Oakland and we're going to make the community better. We're going to do all this stuff. And she was like, OK, well, don't take the money and run. Well, here we are five, six years later and they're they're in a position where they can take the money and run and li literally they build the stadium because of this thing, you know, and it's uh, I, like, I, I, maybe I'll, I'll send a link out to that on Twitter, but it's going back and reading that article. I was like, Oh, it exactly played out as, as you might expect. You know? so. Yeah. And well, so I think the bigger thing and, and the thing that's sort of maybe more palatable for politicians, like a clearer vision is, 
you know, the, the mayor clearly has said that she is not in favor of the A's staying unless we get a plan for an expansion team, which is basically telling the A's to get lost, right? Because yeah. they are they would make so much more money staying in Oakland between 2025 and 2027 they because of that, to, R- that I feel like they have that to, RSN right? money. Yeah, so that's two hundred million dollars, man. Like yeah. uh but I'm just really worried um that other politicians in Alameda and in, in Oakland, I'm thinking Nate Miley, I'm thinking Rebecca Kaplan, you know, I'm really worried that they are just, they just want John Fisher to sell his land. And then they'll say, sure, whatever you can, you can keep playing there, you know, just pay, you know, pay for the conversion costs for the roots. So we can also have the roots there. I, I'm, I'm just super worried about it. So I don't know if you saw Alex, but over last weekend, I put together this email, an email campaign yes, to have people yeah, yeah. send emails to uh, basically everybody in Nate Miley's office <laughs> and, uh, you know, everyone on the city council and, and the Alameda council and just saying like, Hey, listen, um, what we don't want you to do is we don't want you, you know, we, is we, we clearly as ACE fans, what we want is expansion you know if you keep the a's for the next three years after 2024 we need to be offered an expansion team and uh you know people people answered the call um i haven't looked at it in a while but i think about 1700 people uh you know clicked click the buttons to send people those emails so all these people in those offices opened their email box and had 17,000 emails from (laughs) ace fans so, you know, I think I'll, 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 you know, tweet that out again uh, and say, hey, you know, send this to your send this to your mom, send this to your dad, get more people to fill this out just to 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 get that going. But that's 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 where that's where my attention is uh, coming up. But um, well, one thing I thought was atten- interesting about that, too, is like Summer of Cell documentary. They, they were sending out some yeah. information about how Nate Miley. Like basically they were insinuating that Nate Miley might be stalling the roots deal because he's in cahoots with Fisher who might be in cahoots with the town FC, which is an offshoot started by an offshoot dude, Ben O'Neill from Oakland roots. I know that's a lot of information going on, but basically John Fisher could also be trying to stifle the roots. Um, right. Is that also a possibility by trying to get the you town know, FC I, into I, the Coliseum? Right. I mean, or is this like tinfoil hat kind of stuff here? I, I think it's, it's close to tinfoil hat kind of stuff, but like also, you know, all these politicians love the, this, this AASEG guys. And, you know, the AASEG guys keep saying, we're going to bring a new team to Oakland. And like, you know, and they want to own a new team is what they want. They want to own a new team. So, the you know, building something for the roots is not what AASEG is super excited about, I don't think, because they won't own the roots. They won't own the soul. The, uh, dude, the soul dude, of the roots shout out to the roots for being community owned. That is so They're cool, community owned. Dude. I'm an owner. Yeah, I I'm know. an I need owner to get in of the there. roots I, I've been soul. saving my money, but I need to get in. I don't know if they have another Ooh, investment yeah. round coming up. but what? I mean, They might have another investment round later, but I think. Yeah. Uh, I should have you know, got listen, in the first I'll, one, but I'll, I needed my money in Mexico. Listen, you send me $5. I'll sell you. I'll sell you. I'll sell you 1% of my ownership. Part share of a part share. That'd be great. That'd That's great, right, yeah. baby. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, but I think I think the worry here is that ASEG doesn't really have a plan for a team. Uh, I mean, know, they got if, beat out by if, the if WNBA for by Joe Lacob's group. So who's gonna? Because they, I thought they were a real threat. I thought that was their biggest thing. If they could get a WNBA team, that could be actually. I feel like there's there's some promise there in the Bay Area. There's like a, a market for that here. But once Joe Lacob's group got that thing, I was like, dude, that was their biggest bullet. I don't know what they're going to bring I, here. Yeah. I don't see I don't see where the AASEG is going to get a team, you know, right? Like, an, uh, especially at the Coliseum site, like baseball, I don't think like, honestly, I don't think baseball is a good like the Coliseum's good site for baseball. Um, they're not going to get an NFL team because the ballers, you know, dude. Unlike, uh, unlike with the uh, A's, listen, uh, the ballers fine, but like again, that's not a team that the AASEG is going to own, right? Like they want a team that they own. Uh, like I think, I think what the summer sell people were thinking is like the town FC. That's that. There it is, right? They're going to try and do this thing with the town FC, but like, you know, the women's professional that premier women's professional league, they just they just got a team in the bay, you know. Like, there's no there's no logical they're team for be them. A I, Park, dude. So they they're in cahoots with Fisher too. So the the bay FC, right? It's, 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 like, 
just it's just all of this just seems it just seems fishy you know it's just frustrating <laughs> the, the one thing that doesn't make sense is why why haven't they gotten why haven't they just given the roots and soul closure and said you're going to be playing at the coliseum don't worry I just, I just, I just, I don't understand. And and I think, I think that they're, they're thinking, well, we don't, you know, maybe ASCG doesn't want, you know, because ASCG wants to get, you know, take the Coliseum down or whatever, man. I don't know. It's just, it's all, it's all so screwy. And um, uh, I'm just, I'm really worried that, uh, that um, Rebecca Kaplan and Nate Miley are just going to kind of stab stab uh, ace fans in the back here by allowing the ace to stay there and handing over 200 million to john fisher because it, 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 just handing him 200 million dollars on a platter is just so gross it's just so disgusting isn't rent like so, two million dollars isn't it rent absurdly cheap well, for them I, or something presumably like that what Sorry? that like, presumably yeah. what will happen is that the a's will say oh we'll pay you you know we'll pay you 10 million dollars a year here so look you know look you guys you guys each get five million dollars a year. You know, well, you could do whatever you want with that. You know, you could create the the Nate Miley crime fighting unit. You could create the Rebecca Kaplan garbage cleanup patrol. You know, and um, with that five million dollars, you know, to both the to both y'all, I'm not sure if I. You know, I, I don't know if the mayor's office can block this. Um, and, and I'm a little bit worried about it because I, you know, the mayor's office doesn't explicitly, you know, she doesn't have a seat on the on the Joint Powers Authority. Um, I think she has a lot of soft power where, you know, if she says, no, this is a bad deal, don't take it. You know, that's that that means something. Uh, but I'm, I'm worried about this. So I think I think, you know, I, I now have listen, I now have. 17,000 uh, emails of everyone who, who signed that up. I maybe less. Some people said, don't share my email with Al, but I have a lot of emails <laughs> from people. So, you know, if, if there's concrete developments here and there's something we can do, uh, you know, I might, uh, you know, we might try and, uh, you know, I was working with the last dive bar to do this. So we might, we might send out some messages saying, okay, we tried the emails. It's time to start calling Nate Miley's office. It's time to, it's time to start calling Rebecca Kaplan's office. Let's get them in line. Um, because I just, I just think it would be such a, it would be, so, it, if A's fans are doing so much to organize to fight this, and then our politicians find a way for, for John Fisher to keep all that RSN money in Oakland, it just would be such a, it such would be a like two hundred ten million dollars about right. Something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and then minus the 30 million dollars they have to give to Oakland yeah, and yeah. you know, it'll cost them some money to convert the stadium back and forth between the soccer and the baseball uh you know because i'm sure that they'll say oh you have to pay for that the roots aren't going to pay for that but like yeah. you know ugh. Yeah. you know i just want to i want to starve john fisher of money and force him to sell the freaking team you know so we'll talk uh, about rebecca kaplan she actually retweeted my blog from today she's been re retweeting some of my content so maybe we got to get her on the pod man yeah i would love to hear well, somebody I, from I also kinda... spots, you know so yeah I had a I had a, a fight with her today. She responded. I you know oh, she keeps so saying maybe, maybe we won't have her. So on maybe the pod. not. <laughs> maybe not. I well, so she keeps tweeting. She keeps tweeting. You know, hey, it would always you know it's all it's it's always easier to build in Oakland. It's easier, cheaper, and better to build in Oakland. Why don't you build in Oakland? And I just was basically saying, okay, you know, you've you've been saying that for years, Rebecca, um, you know, Ms. Vice Mayor, um, but. You know, clearly they don't agree with you, right? If they agreed with you, they would have just built in Oakland. Um, and I also don't think that that's really true anymore. If the if it's either the Las Vegas Strip or Howard Terminal at this point, you know, port priority I mean, is Vegas returned. Is just like, like would, here, take our money. Like, yeah, yeah. Boom, yeah. boom. Here, yeah, take yeah. take our money. You know, the the Oakland was only offering money for 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 like. Uh, infrastructure and saying you have to pay for everything you know all the, the stadium yourself so you know i i just i don't think i do, i fundamentally don't think what she's saying is true uh even if it is true it's certainly falling on deaf ears right and and i just want her to fall in line with the with the mayor and say we're you know we're gonna fight for an expansion for the a's and she clearly you know she clearly has heard that we we sent her a lot of emails and she's heard, you know, me tell her that on Twitter a bunch, but um, 
That's why I'm worried. You know, it doesn't seem like, and, and, and this was Casey's deal with, with her, uh, what, where they canceled a, a JPA meeting a few weeks ago for for no stated reason that was where they were going to get you know approve the roots and soul use of the Coliseum and Casey you know uh, tweeted at her what's going on why don't you support the roots and soul and she just sort of had a political answer of I always support them blah 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 and yeah, it's a I I just I don't <laughs> I don't feel like I know where she stands. You know? You're dying. I, I, this is have, eating at your soul. I can see it. I have it a lot of hope for her, you know. You, like, yeah. you know, I I I you know, I don't mean to be trashing her as much as I am. I I just uh you know, I just want her to take a stand here and I want her to take the stand that's with A's fans. And so, you know, um I would love her to come on the pod. I'm not sure that she would want to. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe if I promise to just let you, you, her, <laughs> I, you know. But, but I, I you know, I want to nail her down. Like, where, where does she stand on this stuff? Why don't we have, why don't we have Roots and Soul uh, nailed down? Why, why isn't she saying the same thing that the mayor of Oakland sang? I don't know. Yeah. Dude, I wonder where Libby Shaft's doing these days. Just chilling on her couch. That's a good question. I don't know what she's up to. Uh, probably thanking her lucky stars that she is not in the yeah, position she's that like, All uh, right, Shane, you uh, can take Mayor Tao is. Yeah. yeah, Shane Tao is, I think, uh, yeah, she's she's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's getting hammered from all sides here. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say this about Shane Tao. Um, I think that she, in general, she's been consistent mm -hmm. uh, with her advocacy for the A's, I think. I think she's made one or two missteps, but anyone, you know, I think she's gotten back to the right position. So, so as far, listen, as far as the A's goes, I think Shang Tao has been doing what she can. Um, uh, that's what I'll say about that. Um, yeah. So. Uh, you got anything you know, else? You, I, I'm good. You got anything else you want to get off your chest? I mean, I, I think the whole expansion team is like a whole another rabbit hole. I just don't think that's realistic, but. You know, I, well, I don't think it's realistic either. I yeah. I think I think what that's what that says to the A's is if you think you're getting this two hundred million dollars, you you there's a, you got you <laughs> you got another thing coming to you. Like <laughs> that's right. You know, I I mean, like I I think that there's yeah. like real ways to do it. You know, where people say, well, oh, well, the A's could never promise that, and you say that's fine. Uh, we'll put it in the contract that if uh, that if the city of Oakland doesn't have an expansion team in in six years, eight years, ten years, mm -hmm. the A's, the you know, the John Fisher owes the city of Oakland half a billion dollars or a billion dollars. You know, John Fisher can sign, agree to that, right? Like that's something he can agree to, right? He can't. I understand that John Fisher cannot personally guarantee an expansion team, but <laughs> yeah. you know, he can he, he can, can penalty, agree to yeah. a gigantic. No, right, he can agree yeah. to a gigantic financial you know penalty if the if oakland doesn't get and he's not going to agree to that but the point is is that <laughs> that 200 million dollars should not be in john fisher's pocket anyway uh, i'm getting heated uh the you know if you said there's uh, one more thing off my chest you know everyone listening you know keep pay attention um i think i hope and and this is sort of not up to me as as much as it's up to schools over stadiums. I hope we'll get them on the pod soon. I hope that they're going to come out with a big push for the boycott, and I hope A's fans fall behind them because I think I think that that is that is sort of the one thing that we can do as a fan group. You know, it, it could fall apart for other reasons, but that's the one thing that A's fans can do as a fan group that would get everybody's attention that would really mess with john fisher so i hope i hope that happens schools over stadiums if you're listening you know get the get do the do the legwork get it done let's go and um and let's let's get behind them okay that's all right dude that was a great pod hal uh we've been on fire this past couple of weeks i love it we're back baby we're back <laughs> we're back <laughs> Well, right. I got a lot of things to say, and I like the sound of my own yeah, voice. So. I mean, this, the, the, I can't wait to see how this whole thing plays out. It's going to be really – this is like a Shakespearean drama, and it's just like keeps on going and going. I love it. So, all right. Uh, I'll be back in a couple weeks, and see you at opening day. All right. See you all soon. All right.